Okay, folks, here we are in a strange lake. We're in central Minnesota near uh, Grand Rapids. I stopped at a tackle store, and the gal said she didn't know if there were any bass in here or not. So I looked at it coming down the road, and it looks like these lily pads have to have some bass in them. And so I got my favorite bass lure for the lily pads, and that's, I have my Spro Frog. My Spro Frog, it's a bronze eye frog, and I'm basically just, Gonna just just work the pads and just and kind of walk the dog with it. Basically, just kind of just throw it in these pads. It's pretty far as weedless. I've got a heavy line. I'm just gonna throw it back in these pads and just kind of walk it out. And uh, see what happens. I'm gonna get started. Okay, I got my trolling motor down. I'm just gonna make a few casts and circle this whole thing. Backup Cinco. Backup Cinco. That's the, that's the deal. You hit in there. The Backup Cinco did it. Uh oh. The Backup Cinco was a trick. Now, that was the deal. You saw what happened. The whole deal was he swirled at the head, he hit the frog, and I made a little pitch cast of that thing, and boom. Nice, beautiful little bass hit that Cinco. That's what it takes. Back up Cinco every time. Now I'm not using any weight on this Cinco. And what I have did, I, I happen to have a little 20 pound leader on there. I don't really need the leader. This is a 50 pound braid with a little 20 pound leader. But I just happen to have the leader and it's uh, still holding up pretty good. But anyway, that was the deal. Back up Cinco, son. Fish has never really been caught before, I, not that I can see. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful quality bass. I'm going to let them go. And uh, what I'm doing, one of the things that I do in, in, in setting the hook is I kind of pause just a little bit, but I got the rod in the strike position to start with. In other words, when I make the cast, I'm out here like this, my rod's in the strike position. I'm kind of working it slow and easy, and I'm, I'm ready, and also another thing I'm doing, I have the rod butt into my side, I really got the leverage, I can really set the hook on Remember this is 65 pound test braid, 65 pound test, it's a big deal. That's a bass. That's a frog bass, son. 
that's a pro bass. That's what we're talking about. Monster bass. That is a big frog bass. That's a huge frog bass. Now we're talking to get way back in those lily pads. Just super deal. But you know, folks, if I hadn't had if I hadn't had 65 pound brown, I mean that's a five pound bass. It's a better five pound. It, if I hadn't had 65 pound braid and a band of a horse like I did, I wouldn't have been able to catch him. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. Okay, I'm gonna release this one. Beautiful, beautiful, huge bass, big trophy fish. Yes, sir. Perfect. Well. Beaver den. Nice thing about the beaver den, they have sunk brush all around. By the beaver den. That was so cool. I was looking around there and it was just a beautiful, beautiful spot. Right by the beaver den. I'm going to put my power pole down. And, and I was going to say what I was going to mention was when you're talking about beaver dens, well, let me get the power down. When you're talking about beaver dens, there's all sorts of, I'm going to let this one go. It's a really nice one. What, what happens with the beaver den is they, there's the beaver den, and they sink brush all out here. So all on the bottom, there's there's branches because that's that's what they do. And so that's a lot of extra cover you don't see, but there's a lot of cover on the bottom. Here. So anytime you find a beaver den, it's, it, there's usually some fish around. And in this case, there's been a couple. There was two right there, and another one here. That's three fish, three bass, pretty close to this beaver den. So, patterns beaver dens. The only problem with patterns of a beaver den is that this is the only beaver den on the whole lake. That's the only problem. It'd be nice if there were a whole bunch of beaver dens. glasses I have these are the flying fisherman series I stand up and I can see there's a channel there's a channel right here it goes right to that beaver den and that fish the last one that hit of course he hit the worm here but he hit the frog here too so it was evidently the same big bass a little trick about this at night. My worm's a little bit messed up, but I'll do some time, and it works good, is rather than throw the worm away, because they cost about a dollar, is I cut just a little bit off the tail, just, just a quarter of an inch, not even that, and then rehook it tail first, go a tail first, and I'm using that four-aught uh, hook. You know, folks, I've been filming a long time, and I try to bring you little segments and little YouTube adventures, uh, and this is the first time I've ever ma made a whole YouTube video on the virtues of a beaver dam or a beaver hut, because, you know, it's really something to think about, because I think back over my professional career, I was up in La Crosse, Wisconsin, we had a great big BASS tournament one time. And I uh, jumped over some beaver dams and everything else and got back into some shallow water and fished a bunch of ponds and little places like that with the jig. And I led the tournament the first day. In fact, I almost won the tournament. I think I came in second or third. I didn't find, I, did, I had a bad last day, but anyway, I could have won the tournament or at least I was leading the tournament. And all I did was fish a couple beaver dams and a beaver hut. So that's not a beaver dam, that's a beaver hut. But in some of these places, you know, there'll be the dam as well. And so all along the dam, 
A lot of times, also what happens with a beaver hut like that, they'll have their main hut, and that's where they live. And then out here sometimes there'll be what we call food, feed food piles. And also, what they'll do is they'll go out in the deeper water and they'll, they'll actually sink brush down deep. So I'm kind of casting out in front of this with the worm. And again, I've had five or six strikes here, three or four on the frog and a couple on the, on the, on the Cinco. So there's a whole bunch of fish here. So I'm, I'm saying this is a great pattern, but the only downside is the only beaver, <laughs> it's the only beaver hut on the whole way. <laughs> so beaver, but beaver huts like this can be really a choice deal. Now the wind's blowing in, that could be a part, that could be a factor. But I'm just gonna kind of work in the area over and maybe find some of that submerged brush that they that they bury out here. That might be a, a part of this whole deal. That's, that's five different bass. It's five different bass around this view. same fish I think that blasted that same big five pound fish blasted that frog it was just a great fish it was just a super deal and that's kind of what we have here in Minnesota you know a fish like that's probably 10 years old but nobody it's a catch and release kind of a situation up here and people don't keep a lot of bass that fish has never been caught before I'm looking at his mouth and he's just a real fat big beautiful bass just a trophy and a half but you've seen what happened. I'm fishing a strange new lake. I don't really know too much about it. I'm using a frog with the backup Cinco. Hey, that's what happens, folks. Big, giant fish like this. I tell you, go ahead, come up to Minnesota and try some of these 10,000 lakes. You can catch fish like this, too. Hey, listen, I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed the watching. I hope I ta taught you a few things, a thing or two about how to fish a frog and how to use the backup Cinco. Hey, folks, we'll see you again soon.